everyone, and welcome to another Feminist Fridays episode. And today we're talking about feminist parenting. So here we today we have Corina, jo Joji, and Regina. Hi. Hi. So please introduce yourselves one by one and also let us know what is feminist parenting for you. So let's start with Karina. Hi, um, I'm Karina Petijan. Uh, I've got two kids. They're two and four. Um, and well, really, I think at the heart of it, feminist parenting means that we're raising our kids, whatever gender they may be, in equal ways. So we give them equal respect. They have equal rights and rules and, you know, and all of that. Um, so we treat them equally. It doesn't mean that they have to you know that the that the boys have to wear dresses or whatever it's nothing like that it's just we give them the opportunity to find that out for themselves thank you karina and georgie oh so, I, i'm georgie and uh to say? yes i am a mom my son's already 27 years old and i have a stepson who's also 33 so they're all grown grown up now and uh to me feminist parenting i think is just you know just letting them grow up without even an idea of what gender norm is but, yeah they grow up then they start making their own preferences i try to make my preference like as unintrusive as possible and they figure things out on their own or mm -hmm. if uh there's an opportunity for them to kind of like uh wonder about what gender uh norms are they could always ask and then they still make their minds up along the way Yon. Nice. And Regina? Hi, I'm Regina Laya Grossero. Um, I have a son. He's four years old. And I think um, I think feminist parenting is it's important, especially since I'm raising a boy. Like I grew up um, thinking all of the thinking of all of the things I should and shouldn't do, could and couldn't do, uh, the ways I had to dress, act, talk. And and all of these were were you know overshadowed by by the ways that I had to I felt I had to be because I'm a girl, and I don't want my son to grow up with any of that to grow up with those expectations of how girls and boys are supposed to behave, what they're supposed to like. I just want him to be whatever he wants to be. Sometimes he says, you know, when I grow up and I'm a mommy and I'm gonna do this, I'm like, sure, whatever you want to be, <laughs> let, 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 I will support you if you want to someday be a mommy and, and wear skirts, why not, diba? Nice, so for, for those people who are watching that's maybe not raising their kids as feminists yet, maybe you can give them a reason, like why should you raise your children to be feminists and what are the challenges in raising? feminist kids Karina? well um when i was when i was a kid i asked my dad about this about feminism and he said he couldn't understand why how you could not be feminist because feminism meant equality so it means that by law and by job opportunities and all of that that we treat men and women as equal and so for somebody with children and daughters how could we not want that there see i told you you would you would see some kids. <laughs> right but how could we not want that for all our children to be treated equally no matter what gender they they end up becoming so that's what stuck with me it's about equality and so if it's equality we're talking about then how could you not that's my answer thank you and georgie in second it's like uh it's more about liberation like it's very liberating when you raise your kids as feminists. There's this misconception that feminism is simply about women, but it's not. It's liberating both to men and women from gender expectations of society. And when you have that kind of freedom to define, you know, what you want to do, what you want to be, how you want to express yourself, you essentially become a more fuller, a more whole individual than this kind of bits and pieces of how you should be na in imposed in society say you especially when it comes to traditional gender roles mm. and regina i feel like so many uh of the of the conditions and expectations that a lot of us grew up with are they're traps they're toxic um we are forced to fit in molds that no longer 
alam mo yan, they're not re- either they're not relevant or nimo- anymore or they're not helpful. Um, we're 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 expected to live our lives a certain way, and I feel like I feel like you know by by raising my son to be a feminist, I can I can teach him na you don't have to follow these rules, especially if they don't feel like they fit the way you are. One of the things I, I always try to teach my son kasi is that, you know, think about what you want to do. He's four, so I have to simplify this a lot. But I always tell, tell him like, okay, what is it you want to do? Do you know why you want to do that? People will say, boys should do this, boys should do that. But if that's not what you want to do, that's okay. And I feel like that a lot of that is is at the core of of raising my raising my son to be a feminist na parang parang you don't have to live up to what others expect or want of you you have to do things in a way that feels true to who you are and i feel like yun talaga yung yung nasa core noon for some people that may be feminist i other people may have other labels for that but for me that's what it is and as a mom yeah. no? I'll yeah, just add, yeah. as a mom, it also frees you to be what you want to be. That's That was very important to me because when yeah. you raise your son a feminist, you also get the freedom to be the kind of person you want to be, you know, outside of gender expectations. Because so expectations ex- of mothers are some of the most, <laughs> the most stringent <laughs> expectations of anyone ever. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So less expectations from the people you love. That's also very freeing. And I, I, I personally like. I'm kind of envious. Like you guys get to um, experiment, ba, <laughs> on your kids on how you want it to be brought up. Like, like I, I wish I could do that for a younger me. <laughs> but yeah. So congratulations for being great parents. And so our next question is, what common ways of parenting are not feminist? So feel free to just chime in and what you think, what you see are the common ways. I have one. You know how people will always tell little boys, eh, boys don't cry. Mm. That. that is one of my, that, that is one, it's not, I, I think to call it a pet peeve is an understatement because why can we not let boys feel yeah. their feel their feelings about and even even anger like i i struggle with um with how to teach my son how to express express anger fear um ang hirap eh. there's so many and and i feel like a lot of these are are so toxic to children because even just you know little encouraging little girls to go to ballet and boys to go to soccer why not the other way around parang these these things na shoehorning them into into this is not feminist this is so traditional and and it's like ganun pa rin eh. it's it's still forcing these age old expectations on children who have yet to discover who they are and parang no dito ka ganun guy for me hindi dapat ganun eh Right. And damaging, right? Like and you're damaging, telling kids yeah. that they can't have feelings because of whatever expectations. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, hmm, not feminist, right? So the gender roles are a big part of, of what, I guess, what we consider not feminist. Um, and yeah, so again, it starts from the, I mean, it's obvious in the little things in the, you know, the, the gender reveals with the pink for girls and blue for yeah. boys. Um, it starts there, but it really goes much deeper than that. So like we said, it can be damaging. It can go down to your emotional, your, you know, like you just your being, you know, about what things you're allowed to be and express and what you're not. So, yeah, that's, I guess that's one reason we do it. And you saw is the quickness to label. Like when you, they don't meet the gender expectations, yung nagwawalis, naglalaro ng das, mm. oy, para kang bakla. Or if you're kind of like, ah. like, oy, ano ka tomboy? And it's it's problematic on several layers kasi number one, those things should not be slurs. <laughs> the, those should not have negative connotations to begin with. Ano ngayon kung bakla ka? Ano ngayon kung tomboy ka? But that's one. The other is that um, nililabel ka agad yung gusto mong gawin, which is what does that have to do with sexual orientation or gender identity? Nothing, absolutely nothing. And and again, like what uh, Regine said, like, ang relevance is wala because now, especially in the Philippines, as our, our, our lifestyles become more developed, you don't rely on other people to do things for you. So you virtually have to do everything anyway. You need to be trained to do everything. 
So, hindi na rin siya relevant to put the gender on certain tasks that you end up learning as a kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ako, when, when I was a kid, like, parang, pag sinabi sa akin, tomboy ako, like, that was what I aspired to be. <laughs> like, thank you. It's not a slur. It is what I want to be. Pero parang, it, it's also a double-edged sword, di ba? Kasi parang, uh, I, I didn't want to wear pink. Kasi I didn't want to be feminine. So parang, ang hirap talaga if people try to keep on labeling things and putting those expectations on you. So anything else? Oh my God, there's this thing that this, there's this thing that always annoys me. If I have to buy anything for my son, but especially clothing, and I go to the department store. Oh, asan yung mga t-shirt nyo? Mom, boy po, oh girl. T-shirt lang ang hanap ko. <laughs> Why does it have to matter what? Alam mo yun. He, yeah. Diba? Parang and the even body's... worse for babies, right? Diba? Babies. Like, it it's literally doesn't matter. <laughs> Like I, I insisted na, na parang parang my son has, has I don't personally wear a lot of pink it's it's not one of my favorite colors but I was like I will buy pink for my son just so he he grows up knowing that it's okay mm-hmm. diba I mean if he wants to wear a skirt I'll get him a skirt diba yung ganon na parang parang this, this ev, parang why do all of their things their books their their clothes their shoes their toys why do they have to be gendered diba mm-hmm. So and then then sometimes, ako, sometimes the gendering, the messages are really negative. Like a lot of girl stuff has like daddy spoiled princess or whatever. Like, whoa. <laughs> why would you, you know, put that on your child? <laughs> you know, I bought pajamas for my son. And and I think, and you know, so syempre, I, may mga set. Diba? There's like different colors. There's blue, there's green, there's white. And I bought a set that had pink. As in, sinadya ko merong pink. Para meron siyang pink in his, in his, ano. And then I didn't look at the print on the pajama. And then my husband said, you didn't read this, did you? No, why? Because it says daddy's little princess. Oh, okay. Well, you know, if he wants to be a princess, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> Pero ganun. Pero parang, parang acknowledging that other people might find that weird or even. Hindi pa may mo sa ibang tao. But, you know, it's just it's just pajamas. Why does it have to be such a big deal? Why does this pajama have to be for girls? Did he react? Na natawa lang siya. Because <laughs> I obviously didn't read the thing. And even if I had read it, I just wanted pajamas for my kid. Diba? So parang, even if I had read it and I did see the princess lettering, I would have still bought it. <laughs> it's there. I'll look for it later. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so our next question is How do you plan to tackle controversial feminist issues? Like what? <laughs> Which I mean, ones? Like, like, <laughs> let's say like, sex education or huh? like, like how, how young, for example, would you introduce sex ed? Or let's say, Ano ba ba yung mga controversial feminist issues? Are you gonna talk about abortion with your kid? Oh my god. One day. <laughs> one Parang day. ako hindi pa ready for that. But eventually, I'm one sure. day. When they ask, yeah. ako, oh, I, I, I na nga, take eh. the cue from them. When they start showing interest, will they, mm-hmm. when he started showing interest, you kind of like engage and see how yeah. much interest he has and how willing he is to discuss it with you. Or yeah, she. And well, I think we owe it to them to be, the to be the honest. Yeah. 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 What I, What do you mean by when they show interest? You like, know it. What Kasi do they do? They do? Na yan, kuminsan, or you do you do when they when they see a girl or, or or a guy or whatever when they start grooming you kind of ask you just you try to because the baseline no man is your reference is yourself like when did I start taking interest what were the things that were going on with me. Because sometimes as parents, we tend to forget that we went through that whole stuff. Uh, we didn't like come out all full grown and all wise na, and uh, worldly. We we had those moments, we just we didn't know anything. And we had to kind of learn things along the way then. So that, that was what I uh, kind of tried to pay attention to. Yung mga little cues. And I base I it think, on me. Okay, I'll be miss some things because he's not me. But mm-hmm. I, I agree that. with I know what Karina said about about honesty. Because parang parang I feel like um, 
all we can really do is is be honest um, with with what we feel and what experience and even with what we don't know. Um, yeah. I've found that I found that potty training is a very <laughs> is a <laughs> is a very good period for answering questions. Because, sure, I have a little boy and he pees standing up, diba? He's like. But mommy, why do you pee sitting down? And so this was my opportunity. Well, you know, girls have a vagina and boys have a penis. And we've always been that upfront with him, even before he was he was uh, no, he was potty training. Because he would see us naked. He would he would see us coming out of the shower. Eventually, he would see that obviously mommy has different parts from daddy. And and I would tell my husband then to talk to him because you two have the same parts. So <laughs> I can explain these things to him. But ultimately, a lot of this has to come from you. And then, so I feel like like if you're honest naman with, with your kid and you you explain it in ways that that they can understand. Because we're always yeah. talking to our son, di ba? Kasi wala naman choice. We're all stuck at home. But we're, parang if you, if you explain it naman in a way that they'll understand and you're, you, you, um, are open to their, you show them that you're okay with answering their questions and you encourage them to ask their questions. Hindi sila maiya to ask you these That's questions, true. eh. No. Diba? They won't, they won't be scared to ask yeah. the controversial things because for them, it won't be controversial. Want, right? Exactly. We want them to be not Rather afraid than of them us. asking their, you some know, stranger their on the internet. friend or whatever. Yeah, some stranger on the internet. Diba? But I think that involves building the foundations of trust from in the very first place. Kasi mm-hmm. yun nga, if the, the trust is there, the questions will just come. Oh, and then you wow. get to find out the cues uh, better. But if they're scared na from the onset, that's why they start ask, yeah. asking others. And then, and then did you know, um, there are lots of studies on this, but when we, <laughs> hello, like when we use the real <laughs> names of, of the genitals and other parts rather than, you know, made up cutesy names, that's actually really good for them. Never. It helps protect them against sexual abuse and other things because, you know, they're able to tell your, you know, mom, right, this person said or this person touched or whatever. Um, so it helps protect them also. So it's really important that we be honest with them about what our parts are, what they do, what they're called, right? So that's what my kids are still a little bit young. I mean, we talk about parts a little bit, you know, <laughs> that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> that's what I'm hoping to, but to do. But that's interesting because I also did that while raising mine because it's the So the, the results are kind of like there. The other uh, impact that I wanted to do by just kind of being very honest with them was to demystify it. Mm-hmm. When, they dem- you're, when it's demystified, yeah. You don't get as curious, yeah. and, you know, and like, there's no shame. Mom, in, like, right? like, there's no shame. It's a casual thing. So yeah. when he hears his classmates talk about this, it's like, why is this a big deal? And that's why, this. because a lot of abuse relies on shame. You know, exactly. so it means you're you're betting on that kid not being able to express what was done to him or her. Yeah, because shame no and shame. shock. Yeah. The, the so shock if we demystify it. Of- Right, mm-hmm. <laughs> then uh, you know, then they're much less likely to fall prey to that kind of abuse. I, I feel then like a lot of the time, parang even if it's not a controversial issue or, or something about bodily autonomy, parang anything that's happening around them, if you if you take the initiative to to explain it to them, naman, and and um, and ask them how they feel about it, if they have any questions, then that's that's building the trust. Eh? That's encouraging them to to think about what's happening around them and encouraging them, showing them that that they can ask you anything, and that if you don't know, you can find out together. So, mm-hmm. ganyan, ganyan kami with with our son. If there's something that's happening, like or the lockdown happened, coronavirus happened, diba? and and so we take the time to to explain to our son what's happening, and so that he's aware of things outside of him, um, in in his body, things that are happening to the family. If someone gets hurt, if someone gets injured, diba? even we we try to to explain these things so that he doesn't feel like the, there are things we cannot talk about, diba? Oh. oh. Until now, I'm so associated my son. Like, how are you? Are you feeling? Anything yeah, I th- happen to you? <laughs> I think <laughs> if also, diba, asking them all the time how they're all feeling the and so what they're like, thinking. Para ma-encourage so sila to verbalize. It's, it's just, it's just been such a long process that you, you just respond because it's been your dynamics for the longest time. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's also important when you have to talk about harassment, like like when people touch them without consent, 
things like that. So I think what you guys talked about is it's really important that you get to talk to them. You get to notice these things. You get to they get to tell you what happened. Yeah. Uh, we we just have a comment from O'Neill. <laughs> so let's just show that. So there was a time though when he picked up Lucas from Baker. He said, girls wear pink and boys wear blue. <laughs> so good good dad to talk to him that he can wear any color that he wants. There was another time that he came home and he said, parang we were browsing Netflix and then lumabas yung, yung, yung trailer for Frozen. He was like, and, my, and our son was like, but Frozen is for girls. And I was like, uh-uh. Excuse me. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> and we watched Frozen that night. And by the end of it, he was singing "Letting Go, Let It Go" mm. all the way ah. into the shower. <laughs> I'm like, Hindi. so, right. so, parang address these things agad, de ba? And and yeah. like, look, Daddy's singing. See, so it doesn't. These things don't have to be for girls or for boys only. And it helps now na na if na O'Neill and I are on the same team about this. Parang we're on the same side na now. If there's something we don't agree on, okay, let's talk about it. Um, but for most for most part, we agree na this is how we're going to approach this issue. This is how we're going to talk to our son about this or that. Para para you know the message is is re reinforced from both parents. Yeah, and may ano lang din si O'Neill about about the daddy's little princess. <laughs> he, he really loves it. Nice job. <laughs> Yeah, and, actually, yeah. yeah, he says, Ayan! Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and he does, he does, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Any other controversial issues na, that you think uh, you should talk to your kids about, or what are the things that are not normally talked about with kids? Well, we took our son to Pride. <laughs> And we were like, so how are we going to explain to him all the things he's going to see at Pride? Because he was he was two. Um, that was 2019, and that was June. So he was only two. And we were like, so how are we going to explain to him that people will be, you know, some people might be half naked. There might be people with. So we told him, you know what? You're going to see fairies, um, and some of them really will have wings, and some people will have all sorts of colors in their hair or on their skin and there'll be a lot of rainbows and there'll be different kinds of people and he said okay <laughs> See? and parang for him it's like they're all just people and yeah, and what's exactly but they're just people and and it was funny because because he was only two years old and it was so crowded diba? so he was in the stroller and he wanted to get down from the stroller because he wanted to run around in the rain and dance with all of the people and he said no lucas there's too many people and this is so funny because he said but i'm people <laughs> so so parang meron na siyang sense na there are people i'm people why can't i just you know mingle with with everyone so yon know, just just in the end we always emphasize to him that everyone's just people. It's just that they look different, they want different things, they talk different ways, and that's all okay. Hi, so yon ang gender, yon ang kanyang ano soggy education for now. Um, have you guys heard about the debate? Like, like kids. What about the kids when when you bring them to Pride and they see like kinksters and in Pride March or like people wearing. Uh, close to nothing clothing. Um, what do you guys feel about that if you bring your child or if you go to an event like that? Well, we dress in different ways, right? There's yeah, <laughs> yeah. No issue whatsoever. <laughs> no, and it's the parade. So I think what I'd tell my kids, we haven't gotten to that point, but if we were to go to an event like that, I'd be like, you know, it's like Halloween, right? We're dressing up, we're having fun, people are wearing different things. People and, are half naked. Yeah. <laughs> that happens I do that at Halloween, Halloween too. too. <laughs> but, yes. So, you know. And and maybe for some people this is the only time they can get to wear something like that. So <laughs> so what's the problem, right? I, I think I know for my son. Like is what's his reaction? Does he have a question? 
Kung minsan, mm-hmm. you just listen, parang gano'n yeah. naman. Like, yeah. Same old, same like, old, it's so not an so issue. Like, like, they don't like, care what seconds. other people are wearing. Yeah, gives him three seconds to ten seconds. Okay, what's next? Yeah. I yeah. Scream. Yeah, and it, I think they take their they take their cues then, cause from us, eh, like how we react to these right. things. Exactly. If, right? So if we make a big deal out so, of it, they'll be like, "Why, mommy?" So if you know, because you know, if you cover their eyes, they'll really want to see. Oh, but oh, when we were kids, the parents always covered their eyes. Kapag may naghahalikan, <laughs> of course, that's the thing you really want to look at next time, right? <laughs> exactly. So, but like. If you if it's no big deal to you, it'll be no big deal to them. Yeah. Kaya nice, ganon. Nice. Master the poker face. Nothing. Nothing phases this face. Or yeah. but sometimes if you can't or like if I can't help but react because I'm obviously a very animated person. <laughs> <laughs> so I explained to him also why. Like, you know, mommy's crying because or mommy's laughing because because sometimes my reactions scare him because he doesn't understand what's happening. Right? So I'll take the time to explain that okay, mommy's sad, mommy's happy because of this. So at least maintindihan niya bakit nag-react si mommy ng ganun. <laughs> nice. So what about this next question? So would you do anything differently if your child comes out as gender diverse or any any in the spectrum of the LGBT universe? I'll start because I have the oldest child. And earlier in the atmosphere wasn't this open, huh? So I I actually kind of like uh, wondered about that because uh, you do wonder. I mean, if you were you're, if you're a parent who's kind of concerned about how the future of your kid would be, those are one of your concerns. And mm. I didn't, it didn't matter to me, but I was. There was somebody yeah. asked me that then because one of my good friends had a child you know, he did mag- clean the house, play with dolls. And people would uh, to be automatically say like, Oi, bakla yan. So because, hey, that's, that's okay. Number one, I said, that's okay. I would always call people out. But, no, that's okay. It turns out to be. But more importantly, that's not an indicator. We'll find out soon enough when he grows up and he decides that he, he, he likes men or he falls in love with people of the same sex as he is but right now he's just you know cleaning he's just sweeping and he's just playing with dolls that's it mm-hmm. and they would go like eh, panika, what if your your son turned out to be gay would you be okay would you be okay and it's like of course i'll be okay i'll just be scared because i don't know how the world will treat him if yeah. he's rent. so that was my primary concern so as I see the, the environment opening up to, to the LGBTQI plus plus plus, it makes me actually a, a little bit more relieved now. Yes, my my uh, child can Absolutely. explore the world really, not be too scared. It's one less worry for me. That's that's actually exactly my thought process. Because <laughs> yeah. um the I'm not worried about, you know, my if, if he wants to, if he decides that he's transgender, if he decides that he's gay or bisexual or pansexual or any any of them. But I don't care. You're still my son or daughter, whichever. Mm-hmm. Diba? Whatever. Pero, oh, or daughter, what I exactly that. My worry is not you. My worry is how the world will treat you because kasi, kasi there's still so much hatred and negativity. And I, I know fellow parents who have said, oh, I don't know if what I would do if my daughter turns out to be lesbian. I'm like, pero di ba anak mo pa rin siya? So yeah. what would you do if your child turns out to be lesbian? Mahalin mo pa rin siya. But Supportahan mo pa rin it, siya. Right? We don't want to see our children hurt. We don't want to see them suffer and have a hard time. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the root of a lot of parents not wanting to see their children different. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So I think that's it. So when we're opening up and we're really, we're coming out and saying, you know, these things are not, they're not bad, right? Then maybe... It won't be so bad for parents either, you know. So <laughs> otherwise, you're kind of thinking, "See, no, my papa, you know? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, right. Imagine if if I had a son and he was going to be getting into fights, like. <laughs> so yeah, so we're glad about that, and I, actually, every day I'm hearing of friends' kids um, coming out as everything's uh, kind of yeah, like easier as some different things but you know somewhere on <laughs> somewhere on our very wide spectrum of gender and 
you know, even 10 years ago, you wouldn't have had that. So, Mm-mm. yeah, so that's amazing. Do you, do you notice that there's like a rise in like young people claiming or saying that they are non-binary? It seems and that I, way. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It seems that way. I yeah. guess because we also have the language to, to yeah. explore these things now. Parang, parang, I don't know, in the generation right? of our we parents. We wouldn't have been ba? able to stay non-binary oh, even right. in our generation. We can't yeah. really understand it. Non-binary. The, even you, the you words. Can, it's like, what? 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 Wala, you can't diba? imagine, yeah. imagine it. It's like, what the heck Because like all I knew at, at 12 or 13 was, you know, straight or gay. There wasn't. Yeah, exactly. boy, you know? boy. There, there was bi, but you know, yeah. <laughs> like, like, like I remember happening? hearing yeah. the term silahis when I was growing, but I still don't understand yeah, what it that's means. Right. But, but ADC. Is, is a... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, 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 but something something I've been wondering about that with a you know what seems to be a lot of young people coming out as non-binary is I wonder if it's also a, an attempt to escape from those gender roles. Right. So okay. maybe if as a young age, as a boy or girl, you've been told you have to be like this, you have to be like this. So you're going to come out and say, well, you know what? No, <laughs> I'm non-binary. I don't have to be any of those things. Exactly. So I wonder how much of it is just a rejection of that. Yeah, because right. Every every generation man, has its own rebellious space. No? Yeah. We rebel differently depending yeah. on mm. what's kind of like acceptable at that time. Okay. So that's acceptable. I'm doing exactly the opposite of that. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I don't worry about them, right? <laughs> I think they'll be okay. Yeah. So what what do you think um, you would do if they start rebelling against you? <laughs> they will. They will. They will. Right? They will. But eh. it's inevitable. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Kyle never but, Yeah. So. Never, mm. no. But in the man, <laughs> <laughs> or in the man. That's the thing when you have a trusting relationship with your kid. You rebel because he'll say like, "I'll do this." Okay. You know the consequences. I say cause and effect lang tayo dito. Yes. Uh, this may happen. Yeah. And I'm going to involve myself in your consequences only up to this point. So we're we getting this. Yeah. Cool. So. It, it, it teaches them really to be responsible for their own decisions. And maybe some heard. of the things, oh, sorry. No. And Go some ahead. of the things that would have been considered rebellion if you're open and you're discussing things yeah. with your kids, they'd be rebellion because, I mean, to other families, because you'd be like, mom, why you do like this? Like, what, <laughs> you know, but if you're open about asking questions, that's not rebellion. That's just Aww. normal curiosity. So, it's yeah. Normal curiosity. Yeah, like, and I, I like what, what you said, the parang, parang talking to them about the consequences, because we do that even now with our yeah. son. Like, you want this or this? Okay, well, if you do this, this is what happens. If you do this, this is what happens. But you choose. Diba? Mm. You don't want to shower? Okay, but this is what's going to happen. <laughs> or you want to, you're going to jump in the shower? This is what's going to happen. So always we try to explain to him, this is what he wants to do. This is what's going to mm. happen. Which one is, whichever one he picks. He got to yeah, live with it, even if he's only four years old. Yeah, so, in, in the areas where you can involve them in decision-making and empower them, actually, they take ownership then with, them and with whatever it is that has been decided on. So how to rebel? Oh, nga. Ano pa i-rebel din yan? How to rebel? You can get creative, but okay. Malabang sagot ko lang naman yan. Yeah, but then kids like to test the boundaries. So maybe even if you have a great relationship, they will try to find those buttons to push somewhere. So (laughs) So, what what, ano? Parang I remember reading somewhere na parang parang uh, if you're gonna do something, oh sige, let's both try it. Like you know, you're gonna try smoking. Sige, let's smoke. You you want to drink? Let's drink. If you want to try more one? I don't know. But you know, stuff like that. Na parang oh sige, but you're not gonna do it in secret. Diba? If you're gonna do exactly. it, you do it in front of me. Para walang, walang, we both know what's happening. Because that's the other problem with pagrebelde. If they hide something and and you know, pag when it blows up in their face, sakalang sila magkakwento. That's also that's also I think a big part of it. Eh. Yeah. The first time my son got drunk, he called me up and said, "Mom, I'm so drunk." Hey. I think I'm I said, okay, so uh, who are you with? Will you be okay? I mean, is somebody going to be like attending to you? He said, yeah, my friends are here. Okay, you try to get some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> what a chill mom you are. <laughs> so 
until now it's fire <laughs> how to how to rebel if you know you have to try things out for yourself you like the feeling of getting drunk go ahead i'm not going to help you make you feel like oh my god i'm so cool you know throwing up is going to be throwing up it's not going to be an act of rebellion it's not going to be an act of coolness you suffer if you oh like god, it, that must that must be why my dad would like take me to bars then and like make me drink <laughs> <laughs> Diba? So you don't go and sneak off and, and try it like with other with strangers. You do it in the safety of your home. Mission <laughs> really works, actually. At least for me. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think we like showing them that we're okay with whatever it is they want to try. Um that's that really does something for them. So for example, uh uh, there's a comment that the world is becoming more and more accepting of alternative lifestyles, therefore opening the door for more kids to come out with their truth and confidence. Yeah, I think, yeah, right? Like, I wish we could grow up in this time. <laughs> yeah. So what about how are you with your kids in this <laughs> pandemic? Oh, we, we started discussing that and I was saying it's very difficult. My kids are two and four, which is a very tough age to be with them 24 hours a day. They they need a lot of attention, <laughs> so <laughs> so it isn't easy. Um, but uh, hmm. I mean, it's good that I get to spend time with them and I get to talk to them more also. Uh, but it's it's more difficult. And I was I was also saying the problem too with being home all day long is I feel like most of the interactions are really negative. They're like, clean up, right? Eat your carrots, go to bed. Um, <laughs> I don't want all my interactions with my kids to be that way. But it's so hard to find the outlets where you can have fun together, right? When you're in a pandemic. So yeah, so it's it's kind of tough, right? Yeah. And what it's like, about it's like Sorry, like that time when you couldn't even bring your kids out. Yeah, right? it's like a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Reg. Yeah, it's really tough because it's like we're all locked up together, um, and and it's hard because I have a I have a very 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 energetic son. Like he's so How energetic. He? He's four, and he's so madal dal, and he's he's it's like he's bouncing off the walls. Oh my god, and and. And he's so inquisitive and curious, and he's so sociable. He's 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 the kind of kid who will make friends with the other kid that he meets on the street. Good So so it's been very hard for him. So so, but well, it's it helps that that my my husband is very hands on with with our son. Parang if I need to work, um, if I need to be in a webinar or something, then then he'll make sure that 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 my son is is occupied and stuff mm -hmm. um and it's it's tough so we we really tried to form routines and 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 traditions like during the pandemic and sometimes like weekends we'll we'll form we'll we'll go out for a treat like there's a there's a memorial park nearby and that's where we'll we'll go biking because that's the only place that's you know open air pero sparsely populated so mm -hmm. so you know we can still distance from other people so little little joy like that, like let's get drive through Sunday, alam mo yun, ice cream. Okay, na kami don. <laughs> Yung ganon, we we have to, yeah. we really have to find find the the joy and yeah. the little things like that. Because eh? otherwise, the joy. oh, <laughs> it's hard to find it's the joy <laughs> in this situation. <laughs> but we have to do it. <laughs> but he keeps oh saying God. he wants to go to the beach. Oh, yeah. No, so and right, so much of my work. my interaction is pushing them away. It's like, no, no, I'm working, or like, hey, don't touch me. I, I want to sleep. <laughs> so I, I don't like I have that. this relationship with my cats. <laughs> <laughs> You're always pushing them away. <laughs> Off the keyboard, <laughs> right? <laughs> but of course, I don't want that to be what they remember about growing up, right? <laughs> Yeah, so, he's 27. Uh, the good thing about and uh, and age gaps now, but the good thing about you know um, having a really solid relationship with your your kid is that you para sa akin, kasi we always talk. There's always something to talk, and we're very we're both uh, very information seeking. 
So in the morning, we start off with what's the news and we just keep discussing. So it's really been just fine. We watch when he watches mm -hmm. shows, I watch those shows. Because usually I've uh, acquainted myself with the kind of shows that he watches, it, which is why I watch anime. And I'm more or less familiar because they were watch buddies. So, you know, uh, the, the, the comedy shows, um, the comedy talk shows, the animes, we watch that. Right now, books, if there are books, he will recommend them to me now and mm -hmm. we watch. And we kind of like discuss that. We're both introverts. So um, we're not avoidant. We're just pretty okay having our own, being in one space as long as their internet, there's food. And there's just kind of like places to hop around in the house. We're kind of fine. We don't really miss groups of people. As long as we can communicate uh, through technology, we're fine. So mm -hmm. it has not been very tough on us. And speaking of feminism, I told you about his hair. The reason he's grown his hair long is because I insisted, like, please, please, please grow your hair long. You have not done anything that's remotely adventurous in your life. And I cannot <laughs> Can we grow your hair? Because he's been very stereotypical male. It's him. Like, it's not me. Like, I'm such a feminist. And he's him so stereotypical. And he gives, uh, pardon, to kind of like uh, um, humor me. So his hair is now up to here. But th even that's not his idea. I have to kind of like tell him, oh, it looks oh, so, so good nice. in what he does. So it's like a year and a half it grew that much. How nice. Yeah. <laughs> So if we don't get out of this lockdown for it's another true. boys hair boys <laughs> boys hair grows faster they say they say <laughs> it always parang it always grows so nice and long parang pang commercial yeah. shampoo commercial diba <laughs> but i find that it's a very the pandemic is a really good chance to kind of like uh, establish if your kids or whoever it is you are in the family uh, are the kind of unit that can stick together in spite of confined spaces. It's a good way to really work out a lot of things and, you know, um, kind of figured out how you could navigate each other as seamlessly as possible. No, parang you enjoy each other's company, but you can even kind of feel, feel like there's a getting together and there's a going apart because you have your own room. So, kahit magtalikuran yeah. lang kayo, and you kind yeah. of like act together. I think that's kind of important because that's how relationships stay healthy. Dar ah, darating din siguro kami dyan when, <laughs> when they're older. Yeah. When the kids are older. Yeah. <laughs> right right now, there's no, there's no time apart. Let's just say. And it's just luck that it happened. The adult was shy. Yeah. No, like because like just me and my husband, we we once lived in a twenty-one square meter apartment together. So um, <laughs> that's very small. But we we were, I mean, sometimes you got to get away from each other. But you know, we we managed. <laughs> that's healthy. Come on. <laughs> we don't even have kids, but like. I don't know where you're getting this patience from, Georgie. <laughs> patience for what? Like patience for being together, being apart. Wala akong ganon. I keep telling you, Natin, every time we talk, no, you have to explain to me what's happening to you because sometimes I just cannot imagine. Because you can, I just kind of like revert to my default because I grew up in a dysfunctional family. So the tendency is for me to kind of like move forward and have a, a healthy kind of um, healthier outlook and opt for a healthier way of uh, living my life was to kind of like just kind of like shut that out and just pretend that you're a blank slate and mm -hmm. learn things. Mm, that's a healthy way of reacting to it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of like your edgy Pollyanna. <laughs> yeah, but with the pandemic and kids, it's very frustrating. And especially frustrating is that the government really hasn't seeming doesn't seem to have thought about kids' welfare at all. So it's very frustrating. You know, it's just a blanket like, nope, no school, no going outside, but no other <sighs> thought 
to their mask, you know. no mask, face shield, no face shield. Face shield uh, yeah, well, is. that too, that too. But with the kids, so you know, so having young kids in a pandemic, you feel really marginalized, right? I can't take them anywhere. Like yes. my life is. <sighs> It's kind of on hold. I mean, I can't even rate. Like, I can't even go to the convenience store with the kids in tow. It's yeah, yeah, right. tama. Like we used yeah, to be able to tama. take our son it's to the decathlon, and I mm-hmm. know uh, he would he would run around. He would like bounce on the trampoline and try all of the bicycles and the scooters. And since I don't know, I think it was March, pinagbawal na because strictly yeah. no no yeah. no kid, nobody under fifteen. And now, like the only place I can take him is the memorial park. Ganon. So it's it's been it's been really it's really a, a challenge with with little kids. Parang I I see other families coping. Na parang sure their kids are older. So parang most of the time the kids can like go to school on their own and and but you know, bahala na sila, kaya na nila. But but four years old. <laughs> you know, and you're working lapse. from home. And I'm working from home. Everyone's working from home. From so home, it's, exactly. Oh, oh, it's it's really it's really tough with with a little child who's so energetic i miss daycare i miss school <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it's like they didn't even think na parang if you don't allow the kids to go out then what about the parents they're also stuck at home because you know you're an irresponsible parent if you you, you leave your children at home so yeah. wala, we're, we're, we can't even like if we need to to run errands or something and there's nobody who can who can watch over our son at home. Well, it's it's my husband and my son in the car and I'm the one who has to go into into the store to to buy whatever or or stuff. So even if I try to to bring him outside, he's stuck in the car. But we tried to go to this to this burger place just so we could eat somewhere that was not at home and and they were turning us away. They said we can't yeah. we, we can't be seen serving children because we might lose we yeah, might lose our license true. to operate, diba? So parang if you have a car. Yeah. What if you don't even have a car? Oh, oh. Ah, which, so, which is the case for us, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I see you with your with your bike. Oh, oh we bike. <laughs> <laughs> Buti nga, you can at least you you can bike like around Makati, diba? No, with, yeah. With the two, yeah. Now with the two kids, but yeah, it's it's hard for for little children, talaga. Hmm. So right. I don't know if if you guys uh, have felt this, but like I I have I have dog kids, so uh, sometimes like uh, uh, they're so needy that I I feel bad if I can't give it to them, if I, I can't give what they need or what they want, and like you know like sometimes like I'm sorry I have to work or I have to do something, and so who do you ask for support? And That's another tough guilty? thing. It's another tough thing in the pandemic because it's also a lot of our avenues of support aren't available anymore. We can't see friends and relatives like we used to. So that's another thing that's that is especially tough. Uh, fortunately, you know, of course, I have my my husband and we have grand my my parents now are yeah they're very helpful <laughs> but uh you know but the fact is right like we've lost a lot of channels of support that we would have had in you know normal situations hmm. when when my son was uh only a few months old we lost our yaya and i still had to go when my husband and i still both had to go to work um and so there were friends who would offer to take him for the day so like so like parang daycare like we would leave him with with this friend for wednesday and this other friend for thursday and on and we can't do that now um we're we're a little bit lucky now because he's he's four years old he's older so you know you don't have to change diapers or you know give him milk in a bottle and we live with we currently live with my mom and my brother so at least that's helpful. Like if I need to run out for a quick errand, I can leave him with my brother and they can play video games for an hour. Diba? Or, or I'll leave him with my mom and they'll like they'll like read books for a little while. So meron naman, parang, pero if if aside from that, wala, it's really just we're on our own. So he ends up watching he ends up watching YouTube more than I would like. He ends up he ends up with screen time more than I like. I try because if I tell him to read a book, he's he's not gonna read it by himself, diba? I have to read with him. If I tell him to play with toys, mommy, please play with me. Siempre magigilty naman ako, diba? So it's it's really hard. Yeah. Um, and and sometimes there's really no choice. Wala. YouTube is the babysitter. Um, sometimes yeah. my husband and I both have webinars. Uh, and 
paano na, di ba? Parang, parang I can tell my son to go get cookies from the kitchen, but but eventually one of us is going to have to feed him. So it, it's really tough. So so yeah. we're lucky to have four adults in, in the household right now, but I know a lot of other families don't have that that opportunity, don't have that that option right. right now. And that's part of my frustration with the handling of the pandemic. It's like, well, what about the parents? What about the mothers? What happens to our jobs? What happens to our mobility, right? And nobody even really discusses it, right? The president's just like, no, they can't go back to school. Done. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think so that means parents, mothers especially, have really borne a lot of the, of the, <laughs> the brunt of this. Um, and, you know, and I don't think that's entirely fair, but I don't know. What can we do right now? What can we do, Diba? There's, we don't have any other choices. Yeah. We don't yeah. have any other options. We can't send them. Diba? There's no, there's no, there's nowhere to send them and there's no one who can come and help us. So voila, we're, mm-hmm. it, it really feels like we are on our own. Yeah, so how, how do you deal with that guilt sometimes that, you know, like we, we should be doing more, that feeling? Or, or something, sometimes like when we can't do what we want to do because of other obligations, how do you deal with that? Hmm. I That's cried. Probably, yeah. <laughs> and I cried. Probably, like every parent probably feels like that, right? That that you could have done more. You should be doing more. I don't know I if it's a woman thing because I know we feel yeah. about that even with the pets. Have I spent yeah. enough time with this cat? Yeah. That pet, this cat. I mean, it's like it's everything. My friends. Have I checked in on my friends? Have I checked in on my husband? I mean, you have and like. From the women I've talked to, you have this overwhelming sense of responsibility that you're just supposed to be a lot more. Yeah. I set timers. <laughs> like, I don't really have a timer. Like, sometimes I'll tell my son, okay, look, mommy's going to work for 30 minutes, and then I'm going to set an alarm, and then when the alarm goes off, we're going to read a book. And then, <laughs> and then we're going to read for 30 minutes, and then mommy has to go back to work. And sometimes that's all I can do. Mm-hmm. Or like we'll play outside for like ten minutes, and and then mommy has to go back to work, and g- so voila, we we're on the clock. We we're literally on the clock. I say that's all that that's all we can do. Then I I still need to work. Um, I try to spend time with him when I can. Like we'll play football for okay fifteen minutes, and then mommy has a meeting. So sometimes he's in the meeting with me. Yeah, but the but beauty like, of feminism is, is, is that it's kind of like freeing because I feel I kind of like know. confident to tell people or, or my son, like, hey, can you cook for yourself? I'm so tired. And it's fine. Yeah. And the guilt also leaves because you know that he'll be fine and he won't resent it. I see he understands because you're another person who gets tired. You're, you're, you're not just like mom who needs to prepare my meals for me. Otherwise, she's less of a mom. So you kind of like break away from that. Then Yeah. And it, it helps. It kind of saves you then. You know, it helps going through day after day after day of something sometimes very tedious. Because responsibility, responsibilities aren't sometimes the most fun things to do, but you, they need to get done. Mm-hmm. And it gets you through. When you know that people around you understand because you also understand them. When it's their turn, it's really like, fine. Like, just yeah. because, for example, he's my son, if he can't carry something heavy, I'll carry it. Hindi na porque... You're the man. You should be the one carrying the heavy stuff, and I should just be the cooking. Doesn't it? Everybody could switch roles. Everybody that's a big. There's a big uh, feminist parenting discussion about the emotional burden. I don't know. Maybe, probably Red has read about this, right? So it means that even though I think we are pretty equitable in you know in our relationship with my my husband, um, it you do find that uh, women tend to be the ones thinking about all the things, right? We tend to be the ones who know where everything is in the house, who know what appointments we have and whose birthday is coming up, um, right? <laughs> Um, and that's and so we call it the emotional burden, right? Because uh, it's it's a burden, <laughs> so it's not easy. Um, and so I don't know if anyone has really come up with a solution to this, right? But like well, I don't even we... know. Parang sometimes you wonder: is this in my DNA? Is this in yeah, our DNA? Yeah, yeah. Or or is this like a, a societal? Uh, right. No, I think uh, it is. It's it's just brain, that we're, we're picking up on what better. isn't getting done, right? <laughs> And, and, and you know, the, the, the men in our lives can be as understanding 
as yeah. they, and they you want to help too. You yeah. And you wonder if it's if it's because your mom trained that you to be like that, or the grandmas or your teachers who told you women should be nurturing, women should be the one who care, or else everything crashes down. You know, you have and that's that. how we feel, right? <laughs> yeah, like if something goes wrong, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, I make sure. I, yeah. I've had to go through a lot of <laughs> a lot of counseling <laughs> to try and undo that. So I, I, I don't know. Have you been able to? Because I don't know the answer. <laughs> I, I actually you know. think that that in trying to to um, my son has been a little more independent earlier in life than than he normally would have been because of this pandemic. Because now I, there's only one of me, right? And 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 he I can't always pick up after him. So, Mommy, can you throw this in the trash, Lucas? You know where the garbage bin is. You can throw it away. So. Well, I'm not going to. I'm not. I've learned na parang na na the the fam, the other people of the family have to know, have to understand and accept. Now you cannot always drop everything for them, de ba? Yeah. The ba the kitchen is only a few steps away. This is not a big house. You know where the garbage bin is. So why do you have? To, why can you not stop the YouTube, stand up and throw away your your cold choco, de ba? So parang parang training then unlearning the habit of depending on mom for everything and and say well i'm busy right now i there's only one of me and i only have so much time and energy in the day so can you be the one to do this thing so i've actually had to to i've learned to really ask for help and really spell out what i need done Parang, yeah. okay i'm still doing this thing can you get the pork chops from the freezer and put them in the air fryer but there sometimes you go, it's but there's still the emotional burden you're still the one who needs to oh say, my, we need to but, get the pork chops <laughs> <laughs> but it helps it does <laughs> sometimes well that's that's the parang i feel like that's the start and i know there's a lot of room for improvement pa. like some but but alam mo yan, either either mag, mag, ako. <laughs> that's why right so i think how much of it is just because we don't want to cause conflict right i don't know we've been not, not, parang, i think i think it's just like we're both trained like we we like men and women, parang, so men just have to do what they're asked to do. And like women have to manage everything. Pero parang, for me, like I, I, I talked about yung guilt kanina, di ba? And like, I, I had to learn how to just let it go. Like, it yeah. won't get done as perfect as I want it to be, as much as I want it to be. But then, like, if I stop doing it, somebody else will step up. And that, that's that's my trust in my partner or or my support network that you yeah. will or someone will step up. Yeah, that's true. That's what, that's my advice to new parents, by the way. So if you're a new mom, let your husband do it, right? Like make him <laughs> change the diaper, wake up in the middle of the night. Because even though you might feel like you do it better, yeah, he's got to, <laughs> you know, he's got to become an expert, right? <laughs> we have to give them the chance to do that too. Yeah. And okay. and I think it's a disservice to them not to do it, right? <laughs> So there, so you started it. Any, there, it's any a tip. last tips? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for for our audience. Maybe Joji? You can't do it right all the time. It's it's really a journey. And it's a journey between you, your kids, and the rest of the the caretakers of the kid, caregivers of the, the child in the house. Yeah, you know, I mean, so you gotta work with it. Things change. Sometimes what you thought was correct today. May not be correct tomorrow and everybody has to be open to kind of just change that okay let's do it differently this time and see how that goes it's a journey best enjoyed what about reg i feel like um trust is 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 so important but i remember uh there have been a few times that it would just be my husband and my son at home or, or going off somewhere and i wouldn't be with them and i would ask 10 million questions and, and at one point he actually asked me don't you trust that i can take care of our son for like one day i was like oh no no because he's your son too so parang, like like you said trust that that the things will get done um 
that even if even if he doesn't eat, you know, green vegetables every meal, he will eat. Right? Mm. The, 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 my husband and my son will eat something and, and it it even if it's French fries. Right? So trust that the mm. that things will get done. Trust that things will be okay. I worry a lot that my son will will pick up my anxieties or, or you know mental health issues. But but I also have to trust na, na he will also understand that whatever I'm doing, whatever we're doing, uh, is what we feel is going to be best for him. So a lot of it is really I'm do, I'm doing my best, and I trust that it will turn out for the best. And Karina, well, yeah, and I think what you said, uh, trust. So that goes back to feminist parenting or feminism in general. I think we've also been conditioned to think that men can't do these things, right? Yeah, and that's not right either. Why should our children's fathers not be able to take care of our children right there is no reason uh but again you know that's what we see in the media that's what we've been yes. told incompetent and dads the, right the incompetent dad trope it's it's everywhere it's horrible. so it's horrible why should you know why should we think of fathers that way why should they think of themselves that way so you know and so and there we need so to examine we examine our roles in right. in that trope. yeah yes yeah yeah so are we just saying like, oh, you're so terrible at changing diapers. I yes, guess so then, I have to do it myself. Right? To to reinforcement people. <laughs> yeah. So, uh -huh. you know, and so. <laughs> yeah. So we shouldn't, um, we should trust that they're not that trope, right? That why would we marry someone like that? Exactly. Or why would exactly we want to that. raise a child with someone who doesn't, who mm -hmm. is incompetent in childcare? So that's it. So, you know. Yeah, trust them and uh, d what do you, what do you call it? Maybe encourage, believe, them. encourage, believe in them. <laughs> they can do this and be forgiving. Because sometimes yeah, when you're also. still trying out a new role, the the potential for making a mistake is always going to be there. Yeah. So we have to and be very forgiving. And if you're there going, no, not like that, then, then yeah. they'll never do it again. So <laughs> they'll figure out a more effective way, pala, a more efficient way to wash the diapers, yeah. diba, or heat up the milk. So, yeah. You know, trust diba, and, and let them also figure out the way they want to, to father the kids. Diba. So first step is marry the yeah. marry a feminist. <laughs> Have children. Or have a child with them. Have yeah. a child with a feminist so that you can both be yeah. feminist parents. <laughs> oh, and surround yourself with other feminists. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like I was raised by um my mom's my mom's friends were like a tribe of of feminist women who were also writers. And and I always call them the village that raised me. Um and so it helps to have a lot of yeah. people who share the the, the belief systems yeah. or even challenge your beliefs, Deba, because because that's the village also that's but going there, to be. That's my other the advice. Child. It takes a village. So I know I the expectations on moms are I think particularly high in our generation. You know, there's the perfect Instagram parenting or yeah. whatever. Um, so, <laughs> but that's the thing. But it, I mean, you know, behind those pictures, we're not seeing the village that yes. it took to achieve that. And there is one, right? But yeah. I'm a little bit more open. Like, uh, instead of just kind of like surround yourself with feminist stuff, I just surround myself with kind and compassionate people. Yeah. Because regardless of how different your people who love us be, if you're, if the people around you are kind and they're compassionate and they're kind of like um, accommodating of differences, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. You'll be fine. Everybody will be fine. Yeah, and like sabi nga ni Judy, like asking for help is really important. So I think I think I'm really impressed by the the your friends. Like um, Reg actually mentioned that your your friends offered to take your kid. Yeah, and, right? and these are these are like some of them even are people who I know do not want kids themselves and they're like no give, give us give us Lucas for like one day so you can you can go do your thing and that's that's really sweet because I really feel like like there's this tribe of of people who are who are looking out for for our son and you know eh, parang like 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 Joji said parang they don't even have you don't even have to really share the same belief systems as long as they're they're kind and compassionate and and you know willing to 
be open and to talk about differences. I mean, that's why that's why we brought our son to Pride because he so that he could be exposed to different kinds of people and to see different kinds of things. And and if he's surrounded by people who are who are that open and that that accommodating and and compassionate, nga, then that'll that'll really do a lot to to make mm-hmm. him uh, a good and decent human being. And that's all yes. we really want. That's our goal. Just yes, to raise goal. good and decent human beings, really. More than anything. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you again for joining us, Reg, Karina, and Joji. And yeah, I mean, if we say that surround ourselves with uh, compassionate human beings, let us all be compassionate and kind to others as well. So thank Thank you you so much for joining this Feminist Fridays. Yes, Joji? No, and to our significant others. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let us be patient. To our as village. Well. <laughs> okay. Thank you and bye. Bye. Thank bye. you so much.